In the first part of this series, we saw how electromagnetic processes in plasmas, electrically conducting gases, could form vast filaments, billions of light years across, filaments of current and plasma. This happened without any Big Bang, without dark energy, without dark matter, using processes that we can observe in the laboratory and throughout space. But this process led to the formation of these giant filaments of plasma and electrical currents and magnetic fields. How did these filaments then form the structures that we see today, the hierarchy of planets, stars, galaxies, clusters of galaxies, superclusters of galaxies? We can explain how that happened, again, using processes that we observe here in the laboratory and on Earth. The most important of these processes was gravitational contraction. Plasma filaments, for fundamental physical reasons that were discovered by plasma uh, pioneer Hannes Alfein, move at certain characteristic velocities. These filaments move at about 1,000 kilometers per second, no matter what their size. So large filaments basically look the same as small filaments. They're scale invariant. But gravitation is a force that gets larger and larger on bigger scales. This just goes back to Newton's laws. So gravitational forces that were insignificant on the scale of filaments that were light years or even millions of light years across become dominant on the scales of these largest filaments, which were billions of light years across. So once those filaments formed, again, over the scale of trillions of years, gravitation started to act to contract those filaments initially along the axis of the filaments. Centrifugal force of these spinning filaments resisted the force of gravity towards the axis. So what formed initially was disc-shaped blobs of plasma. Now, at that point, another process entered in. As Faraday discovered 200 years ago, when a disc of conducting matter, either plasma or metal, rotates in a magnetic field, it produces currents that flow from the, from the circumference of the disk to the center. So a new set of currents and filaments arose on a smaller scale as these giant disks rotated in the field of the magnetic vortex. This new set of filamentary currents was extremely important because they transfer angular momentum. When an isolated object is spinning and it contracts, it spins faster because angular momentum is conserved. Just like as when a skater pulls in his or her arms and spins faster. Gravitation cannot transfer angular momentum. So an isolated object only under the influence of gravitation cannot contract very fa far because as it contracts, it spins faster. And eventually, the centrifugal force overcomes or balances the force of gravity. But the magnetic filaments can transfer angular momentum. And they acted like big baseball bats, hitting the surrounding plasma and transferring angular momentum outwards, thus decreasing the angular momentum in the contracting blob and allowing it to contract much further. 
Now, when the filamentary currents converge at the center of these disks, they turn at right angles to flow outward along the axis. In the process, they spin and kink together to form a plasmoid, a self-contained magnetic object with its own instabilities. And these instabilities, which we've studied in the laboratory, produce two beams of energy, ions going in one direction and electrons in another. These beams of energy are themselves spinning, and they carry additional angular momentum, again, speeding the contraction of the object. So it was only the combination of gravitation and electromagnetic forces that allowed the contraction of objects, as Hannes Alfein pointed out back in the 1980s. This process therefore set up a hierarchy of smaller and smaller sets of filaments, with each set of filament forming contracting disks and each contracting disk forming a smaller set of filaments. So in that manner, we got the hierarchy formed of first superclusters, then clusters, then galaxies, then stars, then planets. And we see this hierarchy now in the sky and all around us. In fact, our Earth is part of this hierarchy formed by the combination of gravitation and electromagnetic forces. also see today the relatively short-lived plasmoids that form at the birth of each of these hierarchies of objects. We see at the smaller scale herbig harrow objects, which are formed at the birth of every star, including our own sun. On a larger scale in the center of galaxies, we see active galactic nuclei, and at the center of clusters, quasars. So in this immense process playing out over trillions of years, the universe was turned into a gigantic electric generator with gravitational energy being turned into kinetic energy and part of that being turned into electrical energy generating all of these hierarchy of current flows. In the process, the density of the current flows, the current flux per unit area increased immensely. So in the densest of these objects, the herbig hyro objects, the density of energy flux was a quadrillion times more than in the giant vortex filaments 
where the process started. The end result of this process was the production of stars. Now, stars are dense enough so that filaments cannot form within them because the collisions of the ions within the stars are so rapid that they disrupt the filaments. So that process ends in the production of stars. The knowledge we gain from studying the cosmos is helping us at LPP Fusion to develop fusion energy here on Earth. Cheap, clean, unlimited, safe energy in this decade. But for that, we need money. Not a lot, but we're not backed by any billionaires. So we need you. Please invest in LPP Fusion. The links are in the description below. Share, like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.